Hey guys, what is up? My name is Anthony, and I'm going to show you guys how to write in Python today. I've just recently realized that a lot of my community, especially on the TikTok, um, and even some people that have joined my Discord recently, don't actually know how to code. And if you're interested in learning on, like, how to code, it's not rocket science. Um, I just want to kind of share my knowledge that I've built up over the last couple of years. Um, but as sort of a disclaimer, I don't, uh, I, I don't do this as an occupation. This isn't my job. So... I'm not, I don't still, I still don't think I'm very good at it. Um, it I definitely can get by and I, I can do the research to figure out how to do things, but there's definitely some things that I'm missing uh, sort of at the core. But regardless of that, I figured, you know, if you're just doing it for fun like me and you're not pursuing it as a career and it's something you just want to sort of pursue as your own hobby, um, this might be a good start for you. Before we get started, if you haven't already, um, check out my Discord. If you haven't, if this is the first video on YouTube that you watch, go. If you're interested in learning more about what I do, uh, go back and watch some videos. I know this channel is kind of random, but it's going to be more focused on Python and programming. Um, you know, of course, it's Terra Nova Tech, so I cover technology and I do a lot of cool things with technology. But uh, regardless of that. Programming is sort of my my hobby and I want to share that with you guys So I've gathered a small list of things that you need uh, if you want to follow along with me today and uh, and code your first program um, The first thing you'll need is obviously a computer um, something that can handle um, Python 3 which uh, I believe is very small of a download um, We'll have to do some edits in your path for Windows, but I'll walk you guys through it. So don't worry about that um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you'll need an IDE, which is, uh, that stands for Integrated Development Environment. <laughs> I almost forgot. Um, I use Visual Studio Code. Um, I think I forced myself in the beginning to use that because it's industry standard. But there's other ones out there that I do use as well, like PyCharm, um, Jupyter Notebook, things like that. But for the sake of this um, follow along, download Visual Studio Code. I'll leave a link below. And um, once you have those two things installed, and, and I'll walk you through that part, um, then we can get to coding straight away. So without further ado, put your headphones in, listen to some awesome chill hop, grab yourself a coffee, and let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need is, obviously, if you're gonna code in Python, you need Python. So you're gonna make your way over to python.org slash downloads, and um, the latest version's probably okay. I think you can, you, yeah, you can download um, earlier versions, but, uh, 3.9 is okay. I think I'm on 3.8.9 right now. Um, yeah, so that's fine. Um, once that's downloaded, run it. Um, I'm going to link a video on how to map the um, paths for that. Um, it's not a huge deal, but if you're using a Windows computer, you'll need a path for it. If you're using Mac, I don't think you do. I think you can just get away with downloading this for Mac OS and you'll be totally fine. Um, which reminds me, um, while I'm on the subject, if you're using a MacBook right now, you can still follow along. Um, it will be a slightly different experience, but it'll be about the same as far as what we're what we're covering today. You'll find that later down the road, some dependencies um, might not work as well as others, <clears throat> but that's okay. The second thing you're going to need is download uh, Visual Studio Code, and um, that is... In the link below you'll download that for windows 10. that is just you install it run it and then you're good to go <clears throat> there's um i think one thing you need to do in settings uh, i'll go over that now so let's launch once that's downloaded go ahead and launch visual studio code and i'm just going to quickly do a new window so it looks fresh so when you open visual studio code this is what it'll look like um, you do have to go to settings uh, dot JSON. Um, but for now, um, what we're going to do is head over to the little marketplace, which in my case looks like this, extensions, and you're just going to look up Python. Typically it's recommended. So the one that I have a star is the one that I have downloaded. You're going to click on that and then it'll say install here. The one that has a ton million of uh, downloads is the one by Microsoft. So once you download that, um, that'll be good, and uh, you can start using Python. So make your way over to this icon up here, and you can close this tab. So I'm going to full screen this for now, make sure my camera's not in the way. 
Um, we're going to create a new folder to open. So make your way to File Explorer. I like to keep my Python files and documents and Python projects. You can put yours wherever you want. Just keep in mind that sometimes if you're adding things into that file, you just have to know where the path is, that's all. So I'm going to call this, um, I don't know, hello.py or whatever, just hello. Okay, now we're going to open a folder. So we're going to go here and I'm going to open that same folder that I just created that has nothing in it. There you go. So you can see over here, this is the folder that we've opened. From here, we can create new files, we can create new folders. This is basically, it, it even says explore right here, but this is essentially the same thing as uh, File Explorer. Um, it's just Visual Studio Code's version of it. Um, and you can use it like you would use File Explorer, right? But So I can take a file and drag it right in here um, if, I, if I want to, pictures or um, other Python files. But what we're gonna do for now is just create a new file and it defaults to text files. So if I just said like, um, hello, and then hit enter, this is a new text file. Hello, my name is Anthony. Um, so this isn't Python. What we're gonna wanna do to tell it it's Python is uh, we're gonna rename it to hello.py. And when we give it that extension name, you can see it, it converts it to a Python file. We hit enter. Um, if this is the first time you're doing this ever, you might get a little error down at the bottom right here that says something about linter. Um, just cancel that for now. Uh, as long as you have this .py and it looks like a Python symbol, then you're good to go. Don't worry about installing anything else for right now. Um, you can just hit X and get rid of that. <clears throat> so once you're all set with that and we're on this page, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of the structure on how Python works. Actually, it's most code. In fact, every code that I've, every coding language that I've learned so far follows pretty much these rules. So Python runs from top to bottom. Um, so what I mean by that is line one will run before line two, no matter what. So if I have code here and I have code here and then I have code here, um, whatever this is, is going to run first and then this is going to run. Now you might you might have noticed like when people code that there's indents a lot. Um, that's just a tab. So you have code. Whoops. Uh, I have um, like auto complete on. And then I have code. And then I have code. So how this would run is no different. Uh, it would still run four, then five, then six. But we'll talk about sort of what the indents mean um, and. We'll go over that in just a minute, but just know that uh, it runs from top to bottom no matter what, unless specified otherwise. There are cases where it won't, but we'll go over that when we cover functions in a little bit. Um, what else? Hmm. Um, let's cover strings, first of all. So what a string is, is it's just text, right? And you can put that text wherever you want. Um, you can put it into the terminal, which we'll do right now. Um, we will. We can put it into programs, things like that. Um, and we can also play with them. So for right now, um, single or double quotes are totally okay. This is a string. And this is exactly the same thing, just with single quotes. So there is no difference between double or single quotes. I tend to use single because it just looks better to me. Um, however, you can't mix and match them. Um, so you can't, in one line, if you have multiple strings, you can't do this. Uh, you have to keep them consistent throughout the line. So, but you can, you can mix and match them on different lines. So you, like what I have right here, um, if I ran this, well, it wouldn't do anything, first of all, because we're not calling anything. But if it were calling something, that would be totally fine. You can mix and match them on different lines, just not within the same line. Um, so let's talk about built-in functions. Um, Python comes with a ton of like pre-built um, functions that do things, right? And one of them is print. So we're going to use print 
and you'll notice that it changes color. By the way, if you want to follow along with the same color outline, make your way over to settings and then color theme right here. And I'm using Monokai dimmed. This is just my preferred one. You can change it to whatever you want, um, like dark, but print doesn't change color there. Um, I tend to like this better. So use whatever you want, but if you're following along with this, that's probably a good way of doing it. Let me uh, blow this screen up actually a little bit so you guys can see it better. Um, doo -doo -doo. There you go. Yeah, maybe a little more. Cool. Hopefully that's all right for you guys. Um, so yeah, print is a function. Now, functions are called nine times out of ten. <laughs> I say that now because sometimes they aren't. Depends on the dependencies. But uh, as far as built-in functions go, they're always indicated with uh, parentheses. Or not parentheses. What are these? Uh, brackets? Not brackets. Curly brackets. Not curly brackets. Whatever these are. Um, it's too early for this. <laughs> uh, these things. Anyway. Um, so if I, did, if I just ran this... Um, and you hover over it, hover, it will tell you that a bunch of random stuff that makes no sense. Um, eventually, this will make sense to you, but what you can do is you'll see here it says uh, optional text in there. We can put a string in there, and it will print it. Um, you can put other things in there too, like objects and, and booleans and values and things like that. But for now, we're just going to put in a string. So if I do hello world like this, that and we hit this little um, play button up here. Oh, you can't see it. Boop. This play button right here. Okay, we're just gonna run that. Boop. You'll notice down at the bottom we have "Hello World." Um, the path, by the way, this always prints. Um, there's no really clean way of doing it. As long as you're selected on Terminal in Python, then you'll see something like this. Um, this little trash can is kill terminal. I use this all the time. I don't like staring at the terminal while I'm coding. Uh, you can also hit X, but uh, kill terminal will stop the program. So try to use that uh, rather than X, in my opinion. Um, I'm just going to hide this for now. And I'll leave this up here so you guys can see it. Good. Okay. Okay. So that is a built-in function, print. Um, strings are, they're mutable, so you can change them. Strings can also be appended. So if I said print, whoops, print, and I put in hello, then outside the parentheses, I put a plus, and then I do this. That will be exactly the same thing as if I were to just print hello world. Because I've added, just using the plus symbol, you can append strings together like this. Um, I use this almost every single time I code on almost, <laughs> not every line of code, but I use this a lot. So this is really important um, that you understand you can append these things. Now, let's see if I can append a number. So hello plus one, you'll see, can only concatenate string, not integer to string. So the error messages here are actually pretty handy. Um, this is saying I can only concatenate other strings. I can't concatenate integers to strings, um, which is fair, because how would you add one to hello? You just, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? So what you can do, though, is if you really wanted to, for some reason, like um, I was actually, if you've seen my uh, AIM project, I have the username and then the amount of um, friends that are online. So if I wanted to use it for like that reason, I can use another Python built-in function to convert to strings. What that looks like is str and then open and close parentheses. Those are parentheses, right? Yeah. I guess I had it right the first time. Yeah. Um... And then I can put in a number here like that. So if I replace the integer with this built-in function, um, remember that 
the what I what I like to think about is with functions, if it needs an open and close parentheses for like start and finish. So with print here, we have start here and then finish at the end, right? So you can actually see when you when you click on that parentheses, it's showing you, hey, this is where it starts, this is where it ends. And then I have more parentheses, but it's like, hey, that's where it starts, that's where it ends. So you might have, I mean, it's not uncommon to have like that many parentheses with stuff in the middle of it. So it can, it can get kind of crazy, but, uh, but just make sure that you're, like it shows you here when you end, hey, we're ending there, and then one more, hey, we're ending there. So that's pretty cool. But let's print this out. <clears throat> so now I have username one. So that does work. And then you might notice here that it there's no space between one and username. So it <clears throat> it takes appending literally. So see how I don't have any spaces in here, and then I say concatenate one to it. I didn't ask it to concatenate a space, so it's not gonna do it. So what I can do to fix that is I can add a space here, like that, and that'll work. See, username space one. Um, I can also do something like this. I can add a, a space. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but sure, you can do that. And that'll be the same. So I can add username plus space plus string of one. So just like that. Um, another built-in function that you might find pretty handy is uh, integer. So in some cases, your numbers won't be real numbers. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, um, like let's say, let's say for some reason in your program you need to convert numbers to strings at some point, right? But then you need to convert them back to integers what you can do is let's say, um, well, you can just use int. So if I have, um, if I have like one, two, three, and I needed that to be uh, integers, I could say int, right? And then this takes a variable. Now we haven't gone over variables yet, so let me do that right now. What a variable is, is you can assign things to a variable, whether that's a string or an integer or a number or whatever. Um, so in the way we indicate that to Python is we say anything that's not already a built-in function or something that Python recognizes equals. So what I mean by that is if I were to say like this is a list, that wouldn't actually work because list is already a built-in function. Usually, you can tell because it changes color. <laughs> so if it changes color, that I mean, that's how I do it. Um, but obviously, you'll get an error, um, I believe, like if I try to run this. Okay, I didn't get an error, but whatever. You get the idea. Oh, right, because it's turning it into a list. So forget that example. But um, typically, typically, you'll get an error or something weird will happen or it'll change color. Um, in this case, it's not changing color. Um, if I do like uh, nums, right? So that's totally cool. I've now assigned nums to one, two, three. So if I print nums, that'll work. It'll it'll print one, two, three here. So nums is a variable now, and it contains one, two, three in it. So if I wanted to change one, two, three to integers, I could do that now. Um, but let's check to see what it is. Let's say we're so far deep into the program that we forgot, and that happens a lot, don't worry. We forgot what the output is. Um, in this example, it's very simple. So you're maybe thinking, why do I care? I know it's strings, but trust me, you're gonna use this. Um, we can use type, which is another built-in function and then we can pass in nums. And this will tell us, well actually what this does, technically speaking, is it returns the type. But it doesn't, we're, we haven't told Python what to do with the return yet, so we can actually print type nums, and it will tell us in the terminal now what that is. So if we run this, it'll say, hey, this is a string. And trust me, this is super helpful because built like third-party functions which we'll go over in just a minute. Um, they don't 
they're not very clear on what they return sometimes. Sometimes they return things like booleans or dictionaries and you're like you're trying to like print it and you're not doing it because you don't know what it is. So so you'll want to print the type sometimes. Um anyway, so let's uh let's convert this to integers finally so we can use the built-in function int and we can pass in nums and then maybe we want to print that. Okay. Obviously, this is not going to change anything. It's going to still look like the difference between th this output right here and a string output is exactly the same. But one's an integer and one's a string. So just keep that in mind. That's going to be really important for you to understand that. And especially where you're beginning right now and you're going to be playing along with um, certain things you're going to run into a roadblock occasionally where you're like, why is it, why am I getting an error on this? This makes no sense. Make sure to check that your numbers and integers or numbers and strings um, are separated from each other. Uh, things like that. Cool. Let's talk about floats for a second. Um, floats are integers, but they're not identified as integers. They're identified as floats because they have a floating point value. So what I mean by that is if I say x is equal to 1.2 and then I print type x, this is a float. But if I change it to 1, whoops, if I change it to 1, now it's an int. So all it means is you've added some sort of like specific value to it. Um, and this is important too. Because if you're dealing with things like money in Python, you're going to want things to be floats and not integers. Because 1.59 is not an integer, it's a float. Um, and that's important too. And just like, just like converting strings, you can convert floats and make them integers for whatever reason that may be. Um, but if I'm completely honest with you guys, I don't really deal with numbers a ton in Python myself. Um, you can use Python for like a million things and a lot of people tend to use it for like data science, which is great. Um, but to be quite honest with you, I'm not too comfortable with like using, uh, tuples and into and floats a lot. So I'm going to sort of skip over that. That's all you re really need to know about floats for now. Anyway, I don't want to overload your brains. Um, but let's talk about probably my favorite thing to use in Python, which is lists. Um, You'll find later in life <laughs> that dictionaries might be better um, in some ways, but lists, you can do a ton with lists. So, so let's make x equal to, and the way we define lists in Python is with uh, open and close brackets like that. So we're telling Python with those brackets that whatever's inside of this is going to be a list. So let's do, um, let's do like names. So we'll say like Anthony, we'll say like Bob, and you can add commas to these to separate the values in lists. And let's say like Tim. And I should probably capitalize Bob's name. That's kind of rude. And we'll add one more, Sarah. Cool. So we have Anthony, Bob, Tim, and Sarah are, are a, assigned to X as a list. So I can print this list, right? And I get, you'll see that it appears in brackets. Right, that's totally fine. Um, but let's say that we're, let's imagine that this list is a list of students in a classroom, right? And we want to print maybe the best student and the worst student in that order, right? We can do that, we can do anything in Python. <clears throat> so let's do that. Let's say Bob is our number one student, he's just, he does everything right. He knows that floats aren't integers and that they're points and not like whole numbers. <laughs> and uh, he just, he's, he's, he's amazing. So let's print Bob. Now, how would we do that? <clears throat> let's think about this for a second. So we've got Anthony, Bob, Tim, Sarah. Um, but I want just Bob for right now. Uh, the way Python does this is it uses numbers to count the item in the list. 
Now you might be inclined to say that Anthony is in the first position and Bob is in the second position right now. You'd technically be wrong. Um, Python counts in a lot of languages, it, it, like count it starting with zero. <clears throat> it's not all of the languages, by the way. So this is the one thing about Python that's sort of niche. And a lot of people joke about that we start with zero. Uh, zero is Anthony and Bob is one and Tim is two and Sarah is three. So the way we would do this is we want to call the list and then we want to immediately append. We want to tell X that we're pulling out of the list with brackets and then the number that we want to the that we want to grab. So Bob is in this position one because Anthony is zero. So if we take that and we tell it to print, let's just paste it right there then we should get Bob, which we do down here. So this is this is kind of weird, right? This looks this looks mathy to me, like print x index position one, which would be how you would say that essentially in Python. This is an index position of the list, right? Um, now you might think that you can do this. But you can't. So, and I've never actually thought to do that until right now. But you get list indices must be integers or slices, but not a tuple. Because it thinks it's a, tu a tuple. We'll go over tuples in a minute. Um, but that, to me, would be like, oh, I want to print 1, then 0. That wouldn't work. Um, what we can do... Um, so, Bob comes first. That's cool. Then I can... Put a parentheses here and then I can say X let's grab the next best student let's say let's say Sarah is our whoops <laughs> Sarah is our next best student what number would I be putting in here it would be three right because this is zero one two three so let's print that now we have Bob Sarah, okay, we can just keep going with this. Let's say that uh, Tim is the next best student. Tim is three, or two, see, I do it all the time. <laughs> three would be correct if it started with one. <clears throat> and finally, Anthony is the worst student. That wouldn't surprise me. So if we print that, we get Bob, Sarah, Tim, Anthony. That's a pretty, that's a pretty cool way of grabbing lists. <clears throat> list indices. Um, what else can we do with lists? We can check their length with a built-in function. So we can print the length of x, and that should give us 4, which does here. Um, we can also do this. Let's print... Let's, let's say we want Bob, Anthony, Bob, and Tim, but we want to exclude Sarah from the list. For whatever reason that may be um, we can do x index 0 comma x index 1 comma x index 2 sure but that's a lot of typing and there's a better way to do it what we can do is we can say x index 0 through 2 0 1 2 but you might find that that doesn't grab Tim for some reason. So this is a great point that when you tell Python 0 through 2, you're saying 0, but stop at 2. Don't include it. So that's that's something that Python does that's, again, quite niche. So in order to exclude Sarah, this is the weird part because we just told you that it doesn't go 1, 2, 3. It goes 0, 1, 2. But in this case, we're saying that it's 0 through 3 will grab Tim, which is technically index position 2. Hopefully I'm not confusing you too much with that. That's just how Python works. Um, and you'll notice that later down the road, that does actually make a lot of sense to do it that way. Um, but I know right now for this example, it kind of doesn't make any sense. And that's very confusing. But that's how you would, that's how you'd grab 0 through 
index 0, 1, and 2, you would say 0 through 3 um, because you're saying don't include 3. Um, you can use negative in indexes, which is really cool. So let's talk about that. Let's say I just want to grab Sarah. I could do that with, ooh, let's do, let's do like a quick little project. That's fun. So let's say that we want to add things to this list and, and print just the last person that you added. So let's say for some reason we have a program and we're like, I just want to know the last person to the list you added. So we can use negative one here. And what this does is it starts, because obviously if I print the list, it's going to start with Anthony. But if I say negative one, it goes backwards and starts with Sarah, right? So if I print this, I should get Sarah, which I do. So this is great, because no matter what I add to this list, if I add um, Hank to the list, I haven't changed my function, but it gives me Hank. If I add uh, Frank to the list, it prints Frank. So this is great. Let's take it one step further, and let's Let's add something to the list, okay? Let's do it in terminal. So if I want to make a program that adds to the list, let's do, um, let's do it this way. We can say y is equal to, um, we're going to use input. What input does, it's a function. So we're going to add print, open and close parentheses to it. Input takes in a, a value. Um, I, I believe it defaults to string, no matter what. So even if I, if I put, bleh, excuse me, if I put one in there, it would be a string, one. Um, so if I put input, um, input takes in a value of a string to print to terminal, but it but it outputs whatever you want to put in. So if I put uh, add a name like that to it, this whole line, whatever I give it for a name is what Y will be. That's all. So let's, let's print Y and see what that gets us. So you'll see down here, it says Frank because we asked it to print the last name. Okay, then it runs this and it says add a name. <clears throat> so down here we can add a name. Let's say, um, let's use a girl name just because I have too many men in there. Um, <laughs> Alicia. Okay, and I hit enter. It prints Alicia because I've asked it to print whatever Y is, which is the name. That's all. So let's, let's do something crazy here. We're gonna do this crazy thing. This is day one of of coding and you're already doing some crazy stuff. So let's do X. So we're gonna call the name of the list and then we're gonna use append. So we're gonna say x.append, which uh, period in uh, Python essentially is if there's built-in functions that do certain things, um, then we would add that function by adding a period to it. So we're saying like, hey, whoops, uh, x, take that list x, and then do this function append, which is, since it's a function, we're using open and close parentheses. We're gonna append y to x. So that's how we'd say that. We'd say x dot append y. That's pretty straightforward, right? Take the list, append whatever y is, and append always adds it to the end, by the way. So if I do that, it'll add it. Now let's move this below everything. Remember, because it runs from top to bottom. So I'm going to add that below. So if we kind of like take a step back and, and look at what our function is doing here. We're saying, here's a list. Cool. Python's like, that's a list. Great. Y is equal to input add a name. So it's going to say in the terminal, hey, uh, give me a name to add to the value of y. So we're going to add a name. And then we're saying, take the list x 
and add whatever we just said y was to that list. Okay, so it'll add it in. And then we're gonna say print the last name that you've that you've uh, added to the to the list. Okay, and that's it. So we're gonna run it. It's gonna say that's a list. Give me a name. Here's the name. Let's give it um, Delilah. Ah, let's not do that because I don't know how to spell it. Let's do Savannah because I do know how to spell that. And we're going to hit enter, and it's going to return Savannah. Now, if you run this again, and I say George, it's going to return George. Let's talk about for loops. Um, for loops, we're going to keep this program alive, by the way. We're going to continue using it since you've already wrapped your head around it. For loops are loops that sort of... They loop through for the amount of things. The for stands for like for whatever, whatever you want. And so let me give you an example. If I say for, and this name can be whatever you want. So I'll say for nums in the range, which is a function, one through five, and then we give it this little icon right here. So what this is saying, this is really hard, by the way, like to explain and to wrap your head around. So I understand if this is really like it makes no sense at all because it really doesn't. And it took me a long, long time. It didn't take me day one to understand for loops fully. But you do need to know that for loops will loop through a function until it's done with whatever you told it to. So in this case, this is saying for nums in range one through five, if we said print hello here, this would print hello four times because it would, it would start at one and it would stop at five. So if I wanted it to run five times, I would say one through six. Um, by the way, taking us taking a small step back, a comment is something you can add anywhere in the program and it won't run. And that is indicated with the hashtag symbol. So if I said like, hello, my name is Anthony here, this wouldn't run. This whole line doesn't exist as far as the program is concerned. This is just for my understanding. So if like I... If I did some kind of crazy coding and I'm like, I'm not really sure how to wrap my head around this right now, but it works, I could say like, this does the thing that I wanted. Obviously you wouldn't say it like that. You'd say like this, this prints hello five times. Okay, that's totally cool. You can add that wherever you want and it won't affect your program in any way. It's just for your own sake. The reason I'm telling you this right now is because I want you to comment out. This happens a lot. Comment out all this stuff right here for now so you don't lose it, but the program now doesn't see it. It's just going to run this for loop. I don't want you to get rid of it right now because I want to do something with the for loop later, but we don't want it to do any of the list stuff. So that's called commenting out. And that is actually pretty fairly, in my opinion, I do that quite a lot. I comment out like a whole section of code um, to work on something else, and then I bring it back in. That's totally cool. Um, so let's. So we're just looking at this for loop for nums in range one through five. Print hello. Hello, 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 hello. Great. So it works. Um. By the way, this nums can be anything. This could be Terra's in range one through six. Doesn't matter. All your all that is saying is for whatever in range one through six, print hello. This could be P. It could be anything you want. Doesn't matter. You're you're assigning it a name in the for loop. When you say for whatever, 
you're naming that whatever. But you can use that whatever later. So if I said print p, which I can totally do, you're saying for whatever in range 1 through 6, print whatever that is. Now what do you think will return here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because we've given it a specific value here, 1 through 6. So for p in the range 1 through 6, print that whatever. Well, that whatever we said is a range, and that's 1 through 6. Again, I know this is kind of confusing, but we can use we can use it to loop over things like that. Now, while loop is pretty similar, except while loops never stop unless it, you're given a particular reason. So I can say while p print hello. Now, this is dangerous. I'm not going to run it because this will print hello forever because I've never I've not told I've not told the program to stop. So, what I can do is I can say something like while p we'll just print p. While p is less than 10 and then I give p equal to 0 here. Again, this will, so p is 0. So while 0 is less than 10, print 0. That will print 0 forever because 0 is never, it's never gaining anything. It's never, it's never going to be 10. So if I say p plus 1, or p equals p plus 1. So what you're saying here is you're assigning the value of p, whatever p was before, plus 1. That's all you're saying. But you can actually shorthand this, Python shorthand it, and say p plus equals 1, and that will add 1 to p. Okay, so p is 0. While p is less than 10, print it, and then add 1 to p, and then it will just keep while looping over and over and over and over again, but it's going to add 1 every time. Okay, so that's pretty cool, because it will eventually reach 10, so it should print 0 through 9 here. So you see 0 through 9. Okay, just be careful with while loops, because if I didn't put this in here, and I ran it, let's do it for the sake of the program, it's literally printing zero forever. Like I'm scrolling and it won't stop. It's just, it it's broke. Like I just have to hit the trash can to stop it. It will just print zero until your computer breaks. So not really, it won't break your computer, but it will, uh, it will slow everything down and like make things impossible to do. So, okay, I've gotten a little ahead of myself here. Oh, I did break it. Look at that. I got to close out of the program. Don't do that. Don't just follow what I did. <laughs> I told you. It didn't break my computer, but it, it, it broke the program. <laughs> anyway, so let's bring all this stuff back because I want to do something cool with it. So this is a little program that we built that will, will add a name to a list, right? And it will print the last name. So let's condense all this stuff here. Let's bring it down. So let's say we want to add five names to the list. Instead of running the program five times, it won't actually add the list. It won't add names to the list and continue, it like remember that information because the program's closed after you print. So let's add a quick little for loop in here. For n in range 1 through 6, which we'll do it five times. Okay, then we're going to select all of this stuff and we're going to hit tab. So this is where indentation comes into play. So it's going to say 
x is this list, cool. For n in range 1 through 5, I'm saying 5 here because it's not including 6, um, do this stuff. Okay. Once that's done, move on. Okay, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to loop through this until it's done and not run anything below it until it's done. So when it's done, we want to print x because we want to see the list after we're done appending things to it. So let's shorten the list actually to like two names so it's not too long. So if I printed x right now, it would just say Anthony and Bob. But I'm going to add a bunch of names to it, and then I'm going to print x. Let's see what happens. So add a name. We're going to say Robbie. And it prints the name Robbie to confirm that I've added it in there here. Bobby. Hobby. Chobby. And Phil. Okay. So we should get, when I hit enter, because it's looped over this five times, it should print the list with all the names added to the end of it. There you go. Anthony, Bob, Robbie, Bobby, Hobby, Jobby, and Phil. Boom. So there you go. We've at, we just made our own little program that adds names to a list. And then we printed the list out. Pretty nice. Um, we're going to stop there as far as information goes on Python itself. And I'm going to talk a little bit about these things called dependencies, which you'll find once you've learned Python pretty well, like you're like very comfortable with all the things I showed you and you've done a little research on your own, you might want to get interested in dependencies. What dependencies are, I call them third party functions <laughs> because, and that's not the official name of it, but that's pretty much what it is, right? If I was a very great programmer and I've added a bunch of functions to this thing and I shared it with the world that you could use these functions that do crazy awesome things like, like maybe like reverse a list and change the list to numbers and then the numbers will like become a grid. Like let's say I did that somehow with some fancy code. I could share that with the world and create a thing called a dependency. Um, now dependencies are very hefty and they include like tons of functions, typically like hundreds if not thousands of functions. So you can use those dependencies and import them into your Python project and then use those functions that someone else created. That's what a dependency is. So if I if I did that, like I use this one all the time personally called tkinter or kinter, and that's a dependency. So someone out there made a like all these functions that do certain things for GUIs called kinter. And how I would import that into my project that I is I was I would use import and then tkinter. And I would have to install that into Visual Studio Code. So typically they have, all dependencies have a way, like how to install, um, how to install this dependency into your IDE. Um, so you would follow those instructions and then you would, um, you would just figure it out from there <laughs> essentially. But I'm not gonna get into it. I'm not gonna get into dependencies uh, into depth right now. But I want you to know that dependencies can be imported and then you can use those functions later. So Python has its own functions and then dependencies have functions additional to that. So it can, it can get really kind of overwhelming in that sense where if you're importing like multiple dependencies, you have access to a ton of these features. Um, but just know that those dependencies aren't they're shortcuts, really. That's all they are. So they're not really any, like, you could write all of your code in Python natively and never use dependencies, but they're they're basically shortcuts into things that do certain things. So that's all you need to know. All right, well, it appears my camera has stopped working, but hopefully uh, this was helpful for you, and uh, hopefully uh, 
you tag along with me on the next one, we're going to go over some really cool things. If I'm going too fast, leave in the comment section below because I've never really taught Python before. Um, but uh, let me know how that goes. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Join the Discord, which is in the comment section below. And I'll add a channel specifically for this sort of learning series. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop it down there and I will help out. I also have a few people in there already that know a lot about Python and are very friendly and willing to help you guys out in any way. So drop those questions in there. And if you liked it, give the video a like, share it with a friend, and I will see you in the next video.